Okay, so this is Beer Christianity, and we haven't had an episode for a while because I've been on holiday in South Africa. And if you want to listen to this, I don't know if you can hear it. That's the sound of the African bush. I am at Lataba Camp in the Kruger National Park, my spiritual home, and where God lives because he can choose where he lives and uh, he would want to live in the best place, and that's where it is. Uh, I'm currently looking at the Lataba River. It is um, very dark, well, not very dark, but it's just, the sun has just set, it's the tropics, it kind of sets like boom, and uh, this is me. Pouring myself a plastic, no, a paper cup of um, fizzy wine, aka J.C. LaRue, what is this called? Selection Vivante Le Domaine. Um, it says premium sparking wine. It is uh, sweet. <laughs> I'm putting a the foil cover back on it so that I can um, uh, prevent bugs getting into it. And I'm sitting in front of it. I don't know if you can hear heat, but this is what heat sounds like. You probably can't. Um, that is my. Uh, ooh, wait, I need to turn off my light here because it is, it is bright. There we go. Uh, that is my fire, which I have now lit. And my dear lovely wife is in the uh, ablution block because we have got a hut that looks out onto the river but does not have its own bathroom. So she's gone to the ablution block, and I thought I would just touch base with you to tell you about the glories of creation and how they can, um, excuse me, um, so bubbly, so sweet, uh, <laughs> they can bring us closer to God. I had this, I'm going to tell you two stories, I'm going to tell you one quick story uh, that is serious, and one that is less serious. Oh, listen to this. As hippos in the river, just going mental. Um, <laughs> they have the most amazing sound, it's incredible. And if you can hear chirping in the background, that is the millions of bats. I will come back to them. Um, but for right now, uh, the first time we came to this camp, we, this is the second time we're coming back on the way down the Kruger Park. If you've never been to the Kruger Park, you need to go, it's wonderful. We're coming down, back to the Tarpa, and the first night I'm out making my fire and I'm you know, cracking open a beer and my wife goes, hey, you want to just chill out on the beer cracking in general, you know, frivolity, because in the hut next to us, um, a family of Muslims was sitting and they were praying. And I was like, oh crap, don't want to be disrespectful. Is it Eid? I think it might be Eid, but I don't know. Um, I mean, I'm not going to not drink alcohol, just because they don't drink alcohol, but at the same time, don't want to, you know, don't want to be that guy. Uh, particularly in South Africa, where there is some conservatism and some toxic Christianity. So, I mean, you got that everywhere, let's be honest, but it's, it's more hardcore here, <laughs> somehow. Um, and, uh, yeah, just just reflecting on how differently I feel about that from a few, maybe 10, 15 years ago when I was still very much influenced by my um, fundamentalist faith. Um, let's be honest, I'm in a land of limited bandwidth and there's no way that I'm going to be editing this too hard, so I'm trying to do it on my phone, so forgive me if it's a bit ropey. But yeah, oh man, looking at the sky and even with a gibbous moon quite high and strong, there is a satellite passing by light, brighter than uh, Venus and just a ridiculous array of stars, like somebody's fired a shotgun into a darkroom curtain or something. I don't know, spectacular. Anyway, I haven't done this since I was in Cornwall last. Amazing. Um, anyway, point being, back in the day, I think I would have been uneasy about the Muslim family next to me. And that evening, I was just like, oh, I just don't want to offend them. And just very, kind of, very much I kind of like liberal, lefty shit. I don't want to be one of the guys who, you know, makes it uncomfortable for them. And then the next morning we had to get up quite early because we were traveling quite far in the park. And I, um, and I was sitting, you know, at dawn watching the sun come up, a spectacular kind of brightening of the sky over, that's what the dawn is, by the way, <laughs> over uh, the Lataba River. And, um, and then I hear the singing, and it's singing the, the prayers of, of the morning of the dawn um, in the room with this uh, little Muslim family. And and I wasn't really concerned about any of the kind of lefty ally stuff. It was more just like, 
Oh yeah, I'm here, I'm facing the spectacular beauty of this creation, like breathtaking. After a few months that have been incredibly difficult for me and people close to me and just, you know, having a tough time as per, I guess. And, um, and I hadn't even thought to pray. And there's something about the structure of Islam and the discipline of Islam that I don't like. And that is not for me, for sure. And I love the freedom of Christianity. But there's something about that structure that reminds us to give thanks and to praise God and to just cement him in our own minds, if nothing else. It's not like he needs our praises. And um, yeah, I just, I thought that was beautiful. And thank you, Muslim family next to me. Um, okay, the other story. I'll try and do this quickly. I went to a picnic spot. The animals have gone feral, and by feral I mean the opposite of feral. I mean, like, slightly um, uh, tame. And they, <laughs> and some of them come and beg, and this has been a problem in the park before, and they have, you know, had to shoot a whole bunch of monkeys and stuff like that because they just got a bit much. And we've had honey badgers kind of trying to get into our bins, which is moderately terrifying, and Janet's trying to climb up onto the deck where we are in case there's some food. <laughs> and at a at a place called Timbavati picnic spot where you can get out of your car, no fences, lots of lions around, which is, you know, slightly terrifying, but actually just very cool. Uh, a squirrel, not a lion, uh, <laughs> kept on coming up and climbing, like getting like right under our chairs and wanting us to give it some food. Now, it's illegal to give food to the animals and also you turn them into pests and they eventually get killed, so we don't do it. <laughs> the squirrel was so unbelievably like persistent that I was like, you know, because I'm a man of extremes, I was like, I will take a knife and then I will bandage the knife at it and if necessary, cut it. My wife was like, don't be an idiot. Here, have a spatula. So I took a spatula. <laughs> and with my spatula, um, brandished the spatula, which made him go away a bit. But then he came back while we were eating and climbed my wife's leg, like her trouser leg, admittedly, but like a little kitty, climbed up the thing. Gave her the fright of her life, obviously. So she kind of goes like, yikes. <laughs> and I uh, pick up the spatula and uh, in what can only be described as the yeetening, yeet that little motherfucker <laughs> backwards. I think it was partly a slap. Partly he got a fright and jumped backwards. Partly I lifted him. But he went several feet. Uh, so the squirrel goes. <laughs> now fast forward to that night. The previous night, when my wife had gone to the bathroom, she had been terrified by this shape looming towards her. Now, this is the bush, so there's, like, very large spiders, and she's pretty frightened of spiders. So the thing is running towards her. It's, like, the size of a large hand. So, you know, significantly bigger than one of my hands. And she's like, oh, shit. It kind of calls me. I'm like, and then she's like, wait, it's not a spider. It's a bat. But now she's freaked out. I'm like, no, no, it's fine. I'll hold a light on it so it doesn't come to you. Fast forward. <laughs> to later the afternoon after the squirrel and I'm sitting uh, writing up a kind of you know I'm writing and uh, I, out of the corner of my eye I see I'm on the porch of our little hut I see the shadow coming towards me I'm like fuck is that a spider or a rat or a squirrel or something like that and it turns out to be a bat and <laughs> the same little bat that had been crawling on the floor of the ablation block so <laughs> I'm like, okay, little bat, that's freaking weird. Where is it crawling? It's crawling towards our door. Why? Because my wife has some kind of psychic call out to all the animals, like Dr. Doolittle and Ace Ventura and some kind of siren to the yeetening. So <laughs> in the spirit of yeet or be yeeten, I'm like, no, little dude, you can't, you can't, I don't have a spatula, but I'm like, you can't cram it. Uh, she will freak the fuck out. Also, how do you get rid of a bat that goes into your room and starts flying around? I was like, absolutely not. So I kind of try and shift it with my foot. It's a polite way of saying I, I yeeted the bat with my foot. I, 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 kicked, I kicked a bat? I don't know. No, no, it didn't get Just push, push it away. So then it jumps up onto the wall, but it's still crawling towards the door. So I have to then, quite high, kind of flip this bat and yeet it backwards. Um, all the while shouting at it. Now there are passers-by who are walking past, having a lovely afternoon, looking at the glories and beauties of nature, which I had been enjoying just that morning. You know, me and the Muslim family. <laughs> They see somebody, they don't know that I appreciated it, that I gave thanks to the Lord for all that is good in his creation. They just see a dude kicking a bat in the fucking face, and they're like, oh, no. <laughs> and then they come 
obviously all concerned, like, oh, this is an animal rights issue, this is a cruelty to animals issue, this is a, I don't know, like a crime against humanity in the bat kingdom, so they're trying to check up on the bat, I'm just like, it's fine, <laughs> and go inside. Anyway, um, these are my musings on uh, the natural world and God's creation. Uh, it's beautiful, you should ignore it, but also, um, you know, good, good to have boundaries, we were, we were told to have dominion, and to me, right now, that means yeeting. Thanks for listening to Beer Christianity, and goodbye.